It's so easy to fall into victimhood mentality when things in your life are going wrong, blaming the people, the economy, your boss. But here's a way, some simple steps to help you to step into empowerment, releasing victimhood once and for all. Let's go get that nugget. Welcome, ladies, to the Life Mastery for Women podcast. I'm Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind, your host. This is where we go to learn to master our life one nugget at a time. Hey, ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you stepping fully into empowerment, leaving victimhood mentality forever. And if you're not stepping into empowerment, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. Because that's all we need, right? We just need one nugget, one seed to plant that creates the giant apple tree that has all the apples on it. It only takes one seed. So that's my hope is one little nugget to help you to shift your perspective and start gaining some momentum in your life where you can start to live free and dream big and stepping fully and embracing the elevated version of you. That's my, that's my goal for you. That's my hope for you. So today we're going to talk about how to shift from victimhood mentality to fully embracing empowerment. Now that's the opposite, right? The opposite of victimhood is empowerment. It's stepping into your own power As a victim, you think, I don't have any power, I don't have any responsibility, I can't make any change because of this person, that thing, this situation. And we all fall into that once in a while. And it's easy to do that. It's easy to blame and to push off responsibility onto somebody else. But it's so important to take back your power. Because as a victim, you can't control the outside of you. We say it all the time, right? You can't control the outside of you. So it's important that as you step into your own empower, your own power and become empowered and take full responsibility for your life, there's kind of something exciting about that. There's, there's something exciting about not leaving your life to some willy-nilly decision of, of your boss or coworkers or kids or spouse or the economy that you step fully into and embracing that power. So why is this important? Because as victims, we don't ever get to live the life that we want. There's always some reason, some resistance, some problem that we just can't overcome. And it is not somebody else's job to help us to become the better version of us. We have to decide that. In that decision, that's where you're planting the seed. We become better versions of ourselves. then ultimately within our family unit, as we become better, it, it kind of rubs off on our kids and our spouse and our immediate family. And as we become better community members and better family members, we elevate our community. We elevate our community. We elevate our state. We elevate our world. One person at a time, all because you made the decision to become a better version of yourself. Because you made the decision to become more empowered. When I stand back and look at my life and I go, okay, what decision should I have made earlier? What would I have made or what ones would I have done at a different time? And I go, I don't know that I would have done any of them. I don't know. The only decision I think I regret, though I wasn't in the space to do this, but is I would have gone to school to get a business degree. <laughs> That's the only thing that I, would have, that I would have done differently. But everything else, I'm pretty sure I would go back in time and choose the same thing based on the knowledge that I had and the experience I had. But I think if I did anything, it would be going back and releasing those beliefs that limited me. But as I stepped into my own power, man, it was so freeing. Because as victimhood mentality especially if you have it the majority of your time, because we all step into it, right? We all do. It's, it's hard not to do that. But do you live there? And do you spend a lot of time there? If you spend a lot of time there, then when you finally make the decision, it is so freeing. Because as a victimhood mentality, you end up with this prisoner mentality, that the guards tell me when I come and go. The guards turn the lights off and tell me when it's time to sleep. The guards tell me, right? And who is the guard in your life? That can be anything. It could be anything and anyone. It could be the economy, the politics, the state, the rules. It could be your spouse, your kids, your family, your beliefs. It could be anything. But are you a prisoner or are you free? I'm hoping 
that you at least want to be free. I'm hoping that the majority of your life, you are free because it's in that freedom that we get to really live. It's in that freedom and that decision that we get to plant the seed to begin shifting. And as we begin shifting, like I said, it has this ripple effect across the planet. As I become a better version of myself, my family elevates, my community elevates, my business gets better, and I'm reaching and touching more lives. And even if you're not an entrepreneur, you're still reaching and touching more lives. So let's talk about um, the solution. The solution is making the decision. The solution is becoming empowered, stepping out of the version, getting, <laughs> freeing yourself from this imagination, this imaginary prison cell, stepping out of it. You have the key. You're in a prison cell. You're maybe not even born there, but you're pretty darn born there, right? After teachers and parents and, and whatever, and they sort of put you in this space. Not all, not all of you do. Not all of you grow up as victim mentality, but I come from a very long line of victim mentality people and family members and, you know, uh, telling me things that were going to keep me low and keep me um, in this poor state, this poor energy state, figuratively and literally. And when I realized as they would say something, there was something inside of me that was like, no, that's not true. Like, I don't believe that. And I'm going to, I'm going to spend my life fighting that and finding the truth of that. And that is totally me. I am a truth seeker. I am a truth seeker and a communicator. So I seek the truth and then I communicate it to you. And one of my modalities is my podcast. So whatever it is you want, whatever, whatever kind of life you want to live, wherever you want to go, whatever kind of job you want to create, a relationship you want to have, wherever you want to live, it can all be yours. It's it's going to be right at your fingertips. But before we get into the steps, let's call back our energy so we can really adopt this new idea and really have a perspective shift. So just sitting on whatever you're sitting on, whatever the furniture is, is just closing your eyes, unless you're driving, and just breathing in deeply. Just hold it right at the top and then release and just feeling your butt in the seat and your feet on the floor. And as you breathe and as you close all the mental tabs that are open of all the problems, the doubts, the worries that you have, it's calling back all of that energy that's out there so we can create. If our energy strands are out on doubts and worries, we don't have enough energy to create. We're just in survival mode. We're thinking of too many things at the same time. So close those mental tabs, bringing your energy back to your heart, breathing in and focusing there. Now, connecting you through your feet to Mother Earth, allowing you this physical existence and this experience that you want. And then as you breathe in your heart space is connecting you to source energy, so you get the guidance and the support that you need to move along on your path. So doesn't that feel good? I just love how you can just sit back and you just take a deep breath, call your energy back in, and it just feels amazing to get in this present moment. It shuts down all the tabs and it's, and it's nice. It's a nice little break. So we're going to talk about empowerment. Now, first you have to decide. This has to be your decision and yours alone. I can't talk you into it. You might agree with me, but if you don't make that internal switch, if you don't plant that internal seed that you are ready to step out of victimhood mentality and into empowerment, not much is going to change. So from the mental perspective, you may be like, yeah, 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 I guess I'm kind of a, you know, I kind of have a victimhood mentality and yeah, I kind of blame people and I give my responsibility away to other people and I hope that it makes life easy. And I ask you, does it? Like, there's certain things that you don't have to do if you play the victim and other people might do things for you. And you might have a mediocre life. But what about living a great life? What about living a great existence? I remember years ago, they used to kind of used to be like this quote or this question is like trying to motivate people. What would you do if you only had seven days left to live? Would you stay in the same job? Would you stay in the same relationship? Would you stay home and watch Netflix? 
What would you do? And I never found that terribly motivating. I actually kind of found it terrifying. Like it created a lot of pressure, like, holy crap, like, I don't know, what would I do only seven days? I have to sleep in there and I have to eat. What do I got? What am I going to do? I liked having a little bit more motivation that is, what if nobody else was responsible for your life? What if you just had to prove yourself and everybody was a yes? Not just a yes because you're sitting on the couch and you're doing nothing but complaining about your life. But what if you could go to your boss and, and prove yourself through your actions, through your diligence, through your, your integrity, through your character, and he said, yes, I'll give you a raise. What if all you had to do was step into the role of being a parent and your kids would listen, but you had to do it in a certain way? No blaming, no complaining, no being the victim to them, but stepping into a new version of you, a new version of an employee that earns a certain amount of money, a new version of a parent who has kids who do what they want, who do what you want, I mean. And you create this beautiful household. You create this beautiful workspace. What if that was the case? If I had to fully embrace and embody a newer version of me, then I could get anything I wanted. I don't have to blame my boyfriend or my kids or my boss or anything. I literally just had to step into a new version. That's empowerment. That's embodiment. That is stepping into the version of you that is a better version. And giving up the everybody else is responsible for my life. Nobody is responsible for your life. Unless you're two years old, then your parents or parents or your guardians are responsible for your life and keeping you alive and hopefully feeding you and giving you shelter and love and and, uh, uh, nurturing you. But no one's responsible for the outcome of your life. And I want to say, as soon as I made that shift, I stood back and I go, okay, wait. All I have to do is the key is in my pocket to my prison cell and I could reach out and unlock the door and I'm free to go. And all of the people go, yeah, you're free to go. Whoever those people are, I can go anywhere I want. Now understand there's consequences for all of your actions, whether good or bad. And you have to understand those consequences. So if you're in school and you're like, I freaking hate school and I'm a freaking genius on the computer or I have this thing or I just don't like school because I'm just not good at it. I understand if you drop out of school, life might get really hard for you. Doesn't mean that you can't succeed. So no matter what it is you do, understand there's a little bit of a change and a shift in the, in the physical world based on your decision. So understand that life can get really exciting, but it can also be a little scary. So understand wherever it is you're wanting to go, that there's going to be a little bit of a ripple effect. So I was in a relationship for about nine years and I wanted the, I wanted the relationship to be successful and it wasn't going to be. I just, I tried for like the last three years of our relationship together and I tried and it just wasn't working. I just couldn't figure out how to make it work where it felt like a relationship I wanted to be in. And when I ended the relationship, I didn't think about the ripple effect I didn't think about the friends that we had together and whose side they were going to choose. Like I didn't think of any of that stuff. And I remember reaching out to some of our friends and after the breakup and nobody's talking to me, they wouldn't answer the phone. They wouldn't respond. They deleted, they deleted my, or they blocked my text. They blocked my messages. Um, they, they defriended me or blocked me on Facebook. And I'm like, what the flip? Like, I'm, I'm in this friendship too. They didn't ever hear my side of the story. They thought that I was just this bad guy and I just, whatever. And I didn't think of the ripple effect, but I will tell you this. I am much stronger, more confident, freer, and more loved in the relationship that I'm in because I ended that one. Like that relationship 12 years later would not have been successful meaning neither of us would have been happy. And I knew that that's where it was going. Part of my design and makeup as this human with the skills and talents that I have is I can see into the future very clearly the path that we're headed. And I made the jump. I took responsibility. I did everything I could to try to fix the relationship, to try to make it better. But I had an unwilling partner on the other end that just wasn't willing couldn't see the things that I saw, couldn't step into the problems, you know, and and trying to find a solution because she didn't see the problems. And 
kind of put her head in the sand. Well, then three years later, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm ending this relationship. And she was surprised, like shocked, really. And I'm like, really? And because we've been talking about it for three years, I don't know why you're shocked at the, that it came to this point that, you know, my values in a relationship are not here in this relationship. But the ripple effect was tremendous to deal with. And I dealt with that for probably two years or more afterwards. But I took responsibility and I took ownership and I took this, this chance to step out of, well, I just, yeah, I'm in this relationship and, you know, I blame her for not paying attention or not seeing the problems and, and well, I just, oh, well, you know, I got in this relationship and I did make this commitment and, you know, I did, well, you know, it's like, but I have a life to live. I have a life and my life is calling me and I need to make an adjustment. And it was in that decision, that adjustment that got me really excited, stepping into my power and going, I need to go this direction and I can't go with this relationship. And it was this freeing experience. Was it hard? Was there a lot of aftermath? Was there a lot with this big, massive ripple effect? Yes, there was. There was a lot to deal with. I'm not saying just jump out of any old relationship, but I am saying that life is calling you. Life is calling you. Are you going to go? And I am seeking forever expansion. I am constantly growing. That is my, that is my sign in my dynamics, my wealth dynamics is growing and learning and changing and shifting. Yours might not be, and that's okay. That's mine. I am constantly moving and shaking and learning and growing and expanding. And I can't do that if my partner isn't sort of going with me. You don't have to go completely, but you have to sort of be on board, right? I need to have that, that person that I can talk to. I need to have that co-creation, if you will. So when we get to this decision, it kind of creates some excitement, but then at the same time, it creates a lot of fear. But I go, what is your life like right now? And what can your life be like on this side over here? What would it be like if you left? Now you can't see around every corner, but can you see around enough of the corners that you know that it would be a good decision? And if I ask you, if the aftermath wasn't that big of a deal, what decision would you make? And if it is that decision, then I say, let's go, because we just need to make you stronger and more confident in that decision, because on the other side of that fence is a beautiful life. Now, could you regret that decision? Sure. Could, you, could it be like the biggest mistake of your life? Of course. So that's what I'm saying. You got to think about it. But what I'm saying is in the victimhood mentality, your life is never going to be your own. When you step into empowerment, your life becomes yours. The freedom to go anywhere you want. And it's a learning experience, ever expanding. But you don't have to do it on your own. Mother Earth and Source Energy are always right there, ready to, to be a part of your journey, ready for you to talk with them, to open that channel, to connect with them, as well as whoever your community is, your family, your friends, me. I have a community. You can join my community. You can be a part of what, what we're doing online right? And ask your questions and be like, oh my God, I just did this thing and holy crap, I'm so excited, but I'm totally scared out of my mind. But when you step in, then that is, man, things just become so exciting. So let's get to the steps. The very first thing, the very first thing is having that self-awareness, asking yourself, am I more empowered or am I more victim role? I would say if you're more empowered, you probably wouldn't be listening to this podcast. Not this episode anyway. If you're more victimhood, having that self-awareness that goes, yes, like I am blaming, who do you blame for the things that happen in your life? Who do you blame? Do you blame the weather? Do you blame the president? Do you blame, you know, who, who are the people that are at fault for the th experiences that you're going through? And if there is, if you can list 53 people, then I would say, yeah, you're pretty much, you're pretty much in victimhood mentality and it's okay. I mean, it just happens, right? And we adopt that and we give up our responsibility. But first is having that self-awareness and that self-awareness that says, yeah, I do blame a lot of people for the stuff that's going on in my life. Then right there, are you going to make the decision? Are you going to make the decision that says, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. I really want to know what it's like to fly my own plane, to drive my own car, to walk in my own shoes and take full responsibility for my life. And this is where we take ownership, own your life. 
You did not get here because of anyone else than you. No one else brought you here. You're here because of the decisions you made, the choices you made, the people you aligned with, and the, and the self-growth that you either did or didn't do. If we don't learn, we continue to have the same problems. They continue until the lesson is learned. We just keep going back to chapter three, chapter three, chapter three, every time until you learn it. Then you move on to chapter four. So self-awareness, make the decision, and then take ownership for your life. This is my life. If you want something, it is nobody else's responsibility. It's yours. What are you going to do? Taking that responsibility, that's the next part. Taking responsibility, what am I going to do? How am I going to think? How am I going to feel? What do I think about this? The last episode, we talked about self-discipline and self-mastery. This can play into, into becoming empowered. Is here I am, I have this business, I want this business to do this thing. What am I going to do. Now that might be build a team of people who are experts in other areas of the business than I am to help it grow. But what am I going to do about it? It's not someone else's fault. It's my responsibility and I am taking ownership. The next is to practice a positive mindset. You can't dog on yourself to get yourself to result get a result in a positive way. You must have a positive mindset. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to keep going until something changes and shifts for me. I'm excited about creating this big, bold, beautiful life. And in order to do that, I must practice a different mindset. Then the next is changing the story of your life. Oh, yeah, well, I'm married and I have kids. I can't start a business. I don't have time for that. You know, I can't, I can't leave them. I can't do that. I don't have time. You're a victim. How can you create time? Because as soon as you say and play that role, there is somebody in the world that has whatever you have times 10 and is making it work. The dream just has to be big enough where it, the things that you're trying to overcome don't matter. I don't have enough money. Doesn't matter. I have too many kids. Doesn't matter. I live in a blah, blah, blah house. It doesn't matter. What are you going to do to overcome that? Every single challenge that comes out of your mouth is a challenge to overcome, says every warrior on the planet. Are you a woman warrior? And if you are, that is becoming empowered, making the decision, taking responsibility and owning your life. Now you get to create. Here's a blank canvas and all the colors in the world. What are you going to create? And then don't give me the litany of all of the things that are in the way. That warrior goes, here's where I'm at. Here's my skills and talents. Here's where I'm going. And I'm going because I want to create that life. And it gets exciting. It gets exciting. It gets scary, but it gets exciting. Changing the narrative, the story. The warrior doesn't come to the, to the, new, the new space and go, oh, okay, well, oh, yeah, but there's going to be sand. There's going to be um, quicksand. Oh, and then there's going to be monsters along the way. Oh, and there's going to be this big cliff. And the guy's looking at him going, I, I thought you were a warrior. He's like, well, I am. Well, get going then. Don't stand here and tell me all about the challenges that are in the way. Do you want to accomplish this thing or not? Do you want to create a big, bold, beautiful life or not? Because you have to step into your new, fresh embodiment in order for it to happen. Somebody alongside you, your husband, your kids, your neighbor, your mom, they're not going to create it for you. You must, you must Step into this for yourself. The next is reframing, as we're talking about the story, is releasing or reframing the limiting beliefs that you have. That warrior is standing on my front step and I go, okay, I'm hiring you to do this job. And he goes, oh man, that's going to be quicksand. I don't know it's going to be quicksand. And I'm like, dude. And he's like, okay, uh, well, he needs to have better words. I can figure this out. I can do this. I can overcome this problem. I can overcome this challenge. I'm afraid of quicksand. Okay, if you weren't afraid of quicksand, that's his limiting belief. If you weren't afraid of quicksand, what would you be? I'd be confident that I can overcome this problem. I'd be smart enough, smarter than the quicksand. Okay, so when you're having beliefs about, yeah, well, I would really like to start a business, but, and what are the buts after that? List them all out. 
but I have kids, but I have a job, but I have a husband, but I have a mortgage, but we don't have enough money. I go, okay, now you take all of those buts as limiting beliefs and then ask yourself if that weren't true, what would be true? Even if you say the kids, you're not getting rid of the kids, but you say, okay, the kids are just an obstacle. Okay, I want to start a business, but I can't because I have kids. Okay, now flip that around. If that weren't true, what would be true? Be like, my kids could help me. Maybe I could put my kids to work with me. Maybe I could work while they're napping. Maybe I could hire a friend to come stay at the house with them. Maybe if it's a a 17-year-old neighbor girl who can come over and play with the kids or take care of the kids while you work for a few hours. See, now you've shifted it around. Before it was stopping you. Now it's encouraging you. Now it's allowing you to move through the challenges in a way that creates a little bit of excitement. On the other end of that, Think of the things that are positive that are the outcomes. Now my kids, because instead, while my kids sit in front of the TV while I work, I'd rather them not do that. But I can't be in two places at once. I can't be in the backyard playing with them and working on my business at the same time. But if I hired the 17-year-old neighbor girl, even if I exchange services with her, maybe I don't have money to do it. Maybe I'm exchanging services. I'm going to help her with her algebra and she helps me with my kids. Now the kids get to play, the girl gets help with her stuff, and you get time for your business. What an outcome. But we have to work through these things. We have to spend a little time thinking through and problem solving, but our why has to be big. Otherwise, we're not going to problem solve. Adopting those new beliefs. So this is the last one. Not only reframing the narrative, but stepping into new beliefs. I can create, I can create confidence in my life, man, that's a really good idea. I could have the neighbor girl come over and hang out with my three and five-year-old so they're doing stuff together and learning new things and I'm getting to work on my business and I'm going to help her with her with her math. Or maybe she's just home alone and she wants some company and she would want nothing more than to hang out with your kids. All you had to do was ask. And lo and behold, all of these things have come together in a very positive way. So step into that role. Step fully in and adopting the new beliefs of this I can do it attitude, the the can do attitude and stepping fully and embracing fully. And it just feels amazing. It feels significant. It feels empowering. It feels freeing more so than, oh, I'm just going to sit here and then I'm going to resent my husband and my kids because I never started a business. And by the time they graduate from high school, I'm now going to be 63 And I'm not going to start a business then. What would you rather have? Who comes out at the other end a better, stronger person? When I say, shit, man, (laughs) I would rather be a stronger person. I wish you well. And I hope that this episode lands in the right way. Thinking about the changes, the subtle changes, maybe even some big changes. It's only for you to decide. I take no responsibility for what you decide after this, only in the fact that I chose to step into my empowerment. I take full responsibility and ownership of my life. That's what I want for you. And if you need some support with this, please come to my Lady Rising group, ask your questions, be in our community. When you're coming in through the membership area, say you're coming in through the podcast and say, you know, share, share with us. I would love to hear how you're doing. Wow, that may have felt like a lot of information in today's episode, but if you're looking for support and a deeper knowledge of what we talked about today, then let's connect. You can learn more about how I work and how you can work with me. Send me an email to the meditation room tc at gmail.com, subject line, let's talk. And in the meantime, you can join my online Facebook community, Lady Rising, and mention that you came in through the podcast. I look forward to supporting you and connecting with you there.